What's up, everyone? Morning fast. It's not even morning. I've been fasting a couple hours now. Got the coffee. You know, simply blessed. We are blessed in Jesus' name. Uh, if you haven't put your trust in Jesus yet, do do so. That's more important than anything. Um, there's actually scripture. One of my sisters in Christ reminded me that bodily exercise profits little. But it still does profit. So our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You know that if you're, you know, if you're reading your Bible and you're learning these things. Um, basically, the Holy Spirit comes to reside in us and live in us. So we're the temple. We need to keep it clean and healthy and fit. So the, so uh, there we go. You have another incentive to, to get, you know, shredded and fit and strong and, and all that. Uh, so it's good motivation. Uh, I wanted to talk about the skill uh, in particular today uh, and because this is something I've ran into this morning and it kind of threw me off but then I realized what was going on and I forgot because it had been a while since I had been on a cut losing body weight um, and it's something that's called the whoosh effect and you know I'm not a bodybuilder I wouldn't say <laughs> but you know those stage ready competition people know a lot about this when they're cutting down the 5% body fat. Um, but this happens with everyone when they're losing weight. And it, what, what's going on is that, well, a couple of days ago, I weighed 235.5, right? So that was like three days ago. I weighed this morning, I was like 237.7. So I was up like two pounds, over two pounds. And I know for 100% I've been eating in a deficit. It's not even debatable. I, I've been tracking stuff diligently with a scale. Um, I don't know, you know, some days I might go a bit higher, but I'm at least in like an 800 calorie deficit or more. Um, and what's happening is the body tries to hold on to more water when you're eating in a deficit. Uh, people forget that your body has this thing. If you remember science in high school, uh, it's called homeostasis. So your body is actually trying to maintain its current body weight and it's trying to it doesn't like change funny enough your body does not want to lose the weight it's like fighting against you right now <laughs> which is hilarious because most people probably should lose a couple pounds <laughs> but the body is like no i don't want you getting lean um so it's it's the body is very smart but i wish it just worked a little better with us with some of these things this throws people for a loop because they've been eating in, in a deficit Hope now. I'm not saying they are for sure. Some people do miscalculate their calories. They don't account for the you know the M and M's they ate off their boss's desk, the three times they went in the office that day and stuff like that. So if you're doing stuff like that, you're just you're you're already screwing up, and you might be eating at maintenance uh, or even a surplus sometimes. And so you might not be tracking things right. But if you are, if you're really diligent, you know you eat from home, you're tracking everything, you're weighing thing on the scale. Um, you're not doing stupid things like weighing a steak after it's cooked, which is what I did one time. And then I realized uh, it was 30% lighter because the water weight and it threw the calories off. You weigh your meat uh, raw and you weigh your potatoes raw and you weigh your food raw, right? That's what I learned. Um, <laughs> I was weighing stuff after it was cooked. Um, but that, that, that that's a, a kind of a thing that you don't have to worry about so much when you get prepackaged food like frozen fish or whatever. You might get like... a salmon or whatever from the store it's frozen it already comes most of the stuff it comes pre-packaged with the calories on it so you don't got to worry about that uh, it's 100 calories you know for a piece of fish or whatever uh, that's why i like things that have the calories on it but if your calories are dialed in you know you're in a deficit what is likely going on if the scale is up or not going down is the body is just holding on to more water this is very common um, and also a lot of people are gaining muscle too. If you're new to lifting and you're in a deficit and you're lifting, you have to remember that your body is losing muscle. It's very, um, it's, uh, you could easily gain, you know, a pound of muscle in a couple weeks and, and, and only go down a pound, uh, on the scale, or you might lose two pounds of body fat, but put two pounds of lean body mass on glycogen, you know, that went in the muscles, that, you know, uh, extra water weight, you know, that, that, you know, come into the muscles when you're, when they're trying to uh, heal themselves. 
there's a lot of things that go on. So what I tell people is just keep everything the same for a few days and watch the whoosh effect happen. And what's going to happen is, for, for me, I'll be 237, 237, maybe even tomorrow, all this week. But then all of a sudden, it'll be like 232, 233. Now, I didn't lose four pounds in that day, in that one day. It just happened that the body wanted to let let go of the water. And this, this is so important because a lot of times people think, oh my goodness, I'm not losing weight on these amount of calories. And then they'll try to go even into a deeper deficit and then stress the body out more and it's just all bad. So just give it some, be patient. I don't even recommend weighing every day. I, rec I recommend like once a week because usually the scale will go down even a little bit every week. Um, ideally, you want to be losing at least a pound um, no matter, you know, if you're already lean, a pound is good, half a pound. Um, if you got some weight to lose over 30 pounds of fat, like me, I'm shooting more for like two pounds or whatever. Um, so yeah, don't get stressed out with the scale. Um, give it time. Just stay tracking, stay on top of it. Um, some foods that I, if you're somebody that likes to eat food and you know, you like to eat a lot, um, being in a deficit may be a little trouble at first until you get used to it. Some foods that you can avoid that are not going to do nothing for your hunger is things like nuts, nut butters, peanut butters, things that have a lot of calories for very little food volume. Like protein or uh, peanut butter is like 200 calories per serving and it, you barely get one little tablespoon of peanut butter. That's literally going to do nothing for your hunger. It's not going to, you know, you'd be better off getting, you know, a huge 200 calorie sweet potato. That's going to fill you up way more. Uh, it's going to take longer to eat. There's going to be more food volume, more food uh, in your stomach, which is going to help satiate you. Um, so, yeah, like, get, you know, cooking your um, uh, vegetables and like 500 calories of olive oil is easy to do. You, people forget how there's like 120 calories in olive oil per teaspoon. It's so easy to like. And that, that's the thing. A lot of times people aren't losing weight and they're even gaining weight. They're like, I'm eating all these healthy foods, right? Hel olive oil is healthy. Yes, we know that. But we, we have a, a math problem right now. So olive oil is not your friend. <laughs> uh, you know, unless you're really tracking it and it's so important to you that, you know, I, I, I would rather get, you know, 200 calories from another protein drink or something like that rather than having a little bit of olive oil. But to each his own. Yep. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Hey, uh, stay reading your Bible. Stay seeking Jesus. Seek Him. Uh, this workout thing is fun. It's fun to train and have other goals outside of life. But Jesus is the life, the way, the truth, and the life. He says, uh, I believe that. You know, you can't uh, put your faith in anyone higher than Jesus Christ. So, uh,. But you do need to stay lifted. Take care of your body. Um, yeah, let, let's just keep getting stronger, keep getting leaner. I'd like to interact with some of you um, more. I know that I got like nine followers right now, so thank you to you all. We're making progress. Um, I started at 250 on this cut, so and that's right around where I started the Keno Body Program. I started doing the incline press and the weighted chin-ups again. I'm loving the incline press. I did... 255 for singles, um, eight singles uh, last night. So th th those actually, are, the incline press is, I'm digging that movement. It's, it's. Um, I think I'm having carry uh, good luck with it because um, I, I, I've spent the last four years doing overhead press, like pressing many days a week, specializing in the overhead press. So the, the movement is, is very similar since you're more upright on the bench. So I think that's why... Um, I, I'm having a little bit of, um, it's working out for me. <laughs> uh, 250, I just start, started at like 185 like a couple weeks ago, and uh, I'm already at like 255. A lot of times when you learn a new exercise, it, it takes a few weeks just to learn the movement pattern, to learn the right bar path. So it's not like you're you're, you're, you're gaining a lot of mu so much muscle in two weeks. It's that your body just has to get acquainted with these new lifts and stuff. Uh, so anybody frustrated that their incline press hasn't went up like 80 pounds in the last two weeks, don't be. 
man. <laughs> it's probably going to stall out here soon. But then I got the micro plates, the 1.25s to add on. So if I can't go up five pounds and stuff like that, or I can't add a rep, I can add the micro plates. And that's how you get strong when, as an intermediate when you've already been lifting over a year usually. And you've, uh, you know, got all that low-hanging fruit out of the way as we call it. You know, whenever somebody starts training, it's easy for them to go up 10, 15, 20 pounds on a lift a week, every week. Um, when I first started deadlifting, <laughs> I was deadlifting like 225 for a set of five. And that was like a max set. I was new to the movement. And like a month later, I was already at like 315. So another 100 pounds just, just from getting used to the movement. And that was way back in 2020. Took me about a year, uh, and I got up to like 440. Uh, I should have kept going on it. I need to get it back stronger again, but um, we're we're gonna do that all in time as well. I'm just focusing more on these upper body lifts. I, I I've been training the legs like mad, squats, doing five by fives. I've definitely gained some strength in my legs. And when I first started training, all I did was deadlifts because I didn't have a squat rack at the time, so I was deadlifting like four times a week. Uh, so yeah, now I'm now I'm doing a lot of it's funny in the in the in the training culture. A lot of people never train their legs and all upper body. Uh, when I started, it was actually like no upper body, all legs. So now so now I'm like doing catch. I'm playing catch up. I'm like the opposite of somebody who's never trained their legs. I'm actually catching my upper body lifts to the legs now. So <laughs> uh, definitely don't want any stick legs. You know, it's funny. You, I've seen guys you know in the in certain gyms like you know overhead press like crazy weight. You know, bench, you know, 350 for reps. And then you've never seen them squat one time in their life. You know, and they wear, like, sweatpants. And you know, like, you know, a 300-pound squat for them would be a struggle. And so I definitely, I definitely, definitely do not promote not training legs. Um, I, I actually recommend everybody go do the starting strength program, novice linear progression, and get your squat and your deadlift up three sets of five. I actually recommend that program over what I'm doing right now because that's the program that helped me get like 80% of my strength. And then, you know, once you get strong and you want to lean down and, you know, you have to, you're eating in a deficit, the keto body style programming makes a lot of sense because the volume is lower and you can't recover from five sets of five on deadlift no more. When you're eating 2,200 calories, it doesn't work out. So there, there's a, there's a um, reason for everything. You know, there's a, there's a time for different styles of training and all that. So anyway, God bless you all. We'll talk soon.